Berlin, April 8, 1989. Saturday mornings were always busy at the checkpoint at Chausseestrasse, and April 8 was no exception. Queues had already formed on both sides when a taxi dropped off Michael Bauman and Bert Greiser shortly after 9 a.m. wearing sneakers and sweatpants, the two East Berliners took their place in the queue and watched and waited. For 10,100 days the city had been divided by a wall that physically partitioned it just as the country itself had been as a result of the confrontational politics of the Cold War. Bauman and Greiser were both born in the East in 1962, so they had known nothing but the wall and the oppressive German Democratic Republic DDR, that built it. Like so many other young East Berliners before them, Michael and Bert imagined escaping to the socially liberal and more open West, but that was a dangerous idea during the era of the anti-fascist protection rampart as it was euphemistically known in the East. The wall and the strip of ground it was built on were protected by barbed wire, guard towers, guard dogs, anti-personnel mines, machine guns, and the DDR's controversial border troops who patrolled it around the clock. They were there to prevent East Germans from escaping into West Berlin, and they had a deadly reputation because of the order to fire, a standing order to shoot anyone attempting to defect by crossing the wall, a crime known as Republic Flutscht. By 1989 Grenztruppen personnel had killed 140 East Berliners at the wall, with the most recent case happening just two months earlier when 20-year-old Chris Geffroy was shot attempting Republikflucht during the night of February 5th. The death of Chris Geffroy brought down international condemnation on the DDR government and its embattled head of state, Eric Honecker. To make matters even tenser, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev had embraced a policy of détente with the West, and shooting unarmed defectors was just not in harmony with that. In response, Honecker quietly revoked the order to fire on April 3rd with the words, it is better to let a person run away than to use a firearm in the current political situation. Although Bauman and Greiser did not know for sure that this had happened, they suspected it. Change was in the air in East Berlin, and with each passing month, it was becoming clearer that the old antagonisms that had given birth to the wall 27 years earlier were beginning to slip away. So, the two men came up with a plan, they would proceed to the checkpoint at Chausseestrasse where Berliners on foot and in automobiles were allowed to cross between Berlin Wedding, in the west, and Berlin Mitt, in the east. Even though they did not have credentials to do so, they would line up in the handling queue to cross into the west with the credentialed pedestrians, but then when the Grenztruppen raised the vehicular barrier to allow cars to drive into the checkpoint, the two men would run through it as fast as their feet would carry them. They only had to cover 500 feet to freedom, but they had to cover it quickly, so the two trained for months by sprinting and jumping hurdles at nearby Stadium of World Youth. Earlier that morning, they warmed up by running a few laps there and then climbed into the taxi that dropped them off near the checkpoint. In the interest of documenting what was about to happen, Greiser had informed a friend in West Berlin when and where he and Bauman would make their escape from the DDR. That friend had taken up a position on the west side of the checkpoint in an observation tower so as to photograph what would hopefully be a successful Republic Flutscht. At 9.30, a guard raised the barrier to allow a car to enter the checkpoint, and that's when Bauman gave Greiser the signal. They burst through the gate and hurtled a waist-high barrier beyond it. The defectors were halfway through when a passport control officer noticed them and shouted for them to stop. A single shot rang out when they were only 20 feet from West Berlin. Bauman and Greiser agreed to surrender immediately. Armed guards swarmed the defectors and took them into custody. The man who fired the shot was caught on film and quickly given the nickname Kip Schutze, the cigarette butt shooter. He was part of the DDR's Ministry for State Security, or Stasi. When the news of the change in policy reached the Grenztruppen, the Stasi remained unaware, and that's why the Kip Schutze did not hesitate to fire. His shot from an East German Makarov was the final shot fired at the Berlin Wall. Throughout 27 years of Cold War brinksmanship, firearms had been discharged hundreds of times, but the Kip Schutze squeezed the trigger on the final round. <laughs>